there's not really anything in the U.S. that looks just like Glubber. They're pretty unmistakable. Full-grown eastern lubber grasshopper is actually going to be the largest grasshopper species that you ever see in North America. Up to four inches long, bright colors of yellows and reds and oranges. They'll start quite small. You'll often see them in big groups, uh, which can make them look quite intimidating, but uh, it's really because a lot with our, our yards and the plants that we love to put out, it's like a buffet for them, so we probably Similar to squirrels and raccoons, we have probably aided them in their quest for world domination a little bit. The lubbers are our neighbors. There's a lot of myths out there regarding as to where they came from, but they uh, evolved here. They are from Florida. They're a native Florida insect. Maybe not the best neighbor out there, but they're probably here to stay. They're favorite host plant is the crinum lily, which is actually a really popular ornamental plant in Florida, but it is native as well, which is great. And this is also one of the plants that gives them the most toxicity. They can't fly, they can't bite, there's no part on their body that can sting or poke or in any way hurt a, a human, it's unless we were to try to eat it, and that's where their defense lies. It's actually that they're toxic to eat. But they can hiss, which can be a little disconcerting, uh, and they can also throw up on you, which is pretty gross, and I've learned recently also stains clothes. The nymphs look so different from the adults that people will often think that they're different species. They'll actually go through five or six molts, and then once they hit adult stage, they'll finally be that big, bright yellow, orange, red uh, uh, menagerie of colors that we're used to seeing. They're all on the ground. Mm. They're everywhere. The ground moves with them. I mean, it, this is when people start to get that locust feeling. Oh, right over there. You can definitely tell that this is one of their favorite plants to eat. And they can do a lot of damage to these plants, but we do get these swarms every year and these plants bounce back every time. They're actually very resistant to pesticides. And so while the grasshoppers are very resistant to pesticides, their parasites probably can't. And so you might actually be killing your ally. It's friendly fire going on for sure. And so if you spray, you're gonna kill your bees, you're gonna kill your beetles, you're gonna kill your flies. All these things that would naturally help your system to be resilient would be damaged more by the pesticide than the grasshopper itself. Luckily for us, those big swarms don't last all year. It's just in this spring season. If you're really serious about controlling your lover population, there's two things you can do. You can avoid using pesticides that will kill their uh, parasitic fly predators. And you can also try to focus on creating good habitat for shrikes, and that includes planting native trees and shrubs, maybe having something thorny around for them to poke their, uh, their food through, and things like that. And so making sure that we are fostering habitat for their predators is actually going to be our best bet for controlling the, the lubber population. Plus, shrikes are super cool. Shrikes, they're, they're small. They're, you really, you're going around thinking it's a mockingbird and you're like, but it's, it's got a bigger head, it's a little shorter, acts a little different. And lo and behold, this tiny little bird is this voracious killer.